it looks like the RTX 50 Super Series might be coming way sooner than we initially expected. Meanwhile, Nvidia's RTX 5090 is suddenly very, very easy to find in China. Micron dropped a Gen 6 SSD that is basically warp speed, and somebody overclocked a supposed RTX 5050 to beat a 1080 Ti. But the real kicker here, Death Stranding is now so realistic that people are using it to bypass age checks over in the UK. Yep, that's where we are now. All right, you guys know the drill. Let's get into it. Yeah, you heard that right. People are now using Norman Reedus's face in Death Stranding to break real world laws. This is where photorealism has gotten us. Let's take a peek. Now, a little bit of backstory on this. Uh, in the UK, they now require facial recognition to access uh, some websites to verify age, right? I have my own thoughts on this. Uploading an ID to anybody. From a privacy standpoint, I'm not a huge fan of that. This is facial recognition, though. Let me know where you guys sit on this. But first, let's take a look at what's going on. The UK has put an age restriction gate on several online platforms, barring access to adult-oriented sites unless users present a picture of themselves that proves that they are of age. Now, reception of this change has certainly been mixed from UK residents, with people generally being frustrated by the barrier of having to do face ID every time they want to access an age-gated section of the internet. Now, like all rules on the internet, there's going to be ways to uh, protest, right? And this is just such an interesting way to do it. In an act of protest, users have been finding ways to dupe the facial recognition and to get to the sites that they'd like to reach regardless of the age restriction. How are they doing that? Death freaking stranding, baby. Some users have discovered that screenshots of Sam Porter Bridges from Death Stranding, AKA Norman Reedus, can actually pass these facial scans. Now, Kojima Productions, who makes these games, they put a lot of time, they have a great reputation for extremely high fidelity facial capture and animation. So it makes a lot of sense that this is passing in a lot of cases. Norman Reedus's character in Death Stranding is face is rendered in such detail that it consistently tricks photo age ID and confuses him for a real person. Now, for those unfamiliar with how facial recognition works in relation to UK sites access being restricted, it's put in place for any age gated access point online. This isn't just access sites. People can't even go into 18 plus rated Discord server channels without authentication. Now, in order to get around that, you have some people spoofing the software by using images of other people's faces. Users are sometimes required to take pictures of themselves in different poses. This will thwart most attempts attempts at users trying to bypass it, but due to Kojima's oddly specific sense of detail, Death Stranding's facial expressions are incredibly realistic and well rendered for pretty much any application you can think of. So basically, and you can see from this tweet here, there's a photo mode within Death Stranding where they can make various facial expressions that satisfy the requirements for the UK to actually enter some of these sites. You can see it on the tweet here. Now the photo mode allows users to pose with several facial expressions with close up detail enough to more often than not, trick facial recognition. Man, this is equally parts terrifying and also a little bit hilarious. I mean, let's be real about this. While this tech was surely made with the intention of blowing people away with Death Stranding 2 storytelling, which is delivery simulator. I played a little bit of it. I love Death Stranding, by the way. I've had a lot of fun with it. And it was intended to make people more immersed in the game. Kojima Studios efforts have found a very bizarre second life in this application. Users have tested it and confirmed that it works with Death Stranding 1 and 2 with pretty high accuracy and photo mode from other other modern games like Baldur's Gate 3, WWE, that's, dude, imagine passing the facial recognition scan with a wrestler. That's just, man, this is the world we live in, boys and girls. It's clear that the UK's age restriction checks have some kinks to work out. Well, I would say the fact that a game character can fool a government backed ID system should be a wake up call for everyone in tech policy. Death Stranding was never supposed to be uh, like an episode in Black Mirror, but hey, here we are. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This is the Mercury Nova and you've never seen a GPU like this. Now we teamed up with Gravistar and Yestin on a limited number of these builds featuring the RX 9070 XT Mercury Nova Edition. This thing looks like it belongs on a Starship and it performs like it too. Inside, you're getting the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, and that insane limited run GPU. It's all cable managed and ready to game right out of the box. And yeah, it also comes with the Gravistar Mercury K1 keyboard included, full metal, hot swappable, and built like a tank. Now, if you're the DIY type, that's totally cool. You can still try to snag the card on its own. Or if you want a clean, professionally built system that just works, this one's for you. Only a handful of these exist, and when they are gone, that is it. Use code ZACKNEWS to save on your purchase only at metapcs.com. And now, back to the news. Somehow, the beloved RTX 5050 just beat a 1080 Ti. That's thanks to a madman with a soldering iron and no regard for manufacturer limits or warranties even. Let's take a peek. That's right, the 50. 
5050, everybody's favorite card. Crazed Modder discovers the RTX 5050 is actually faster than a 1080 Ti. You just have to do a couple, oh, I don't know, uh, really, really straightforward and simple tweaks. Sarcasm meter just off the charts this morning. I hope that you guys are uh, picking up on it. This person ended up overclocking NVIDIA's plucky budget card to 3,300 megahertz, swipes top six scores in 3D Mark Time Spy with 28% clock speed increase. 1080 Ti, obviously an old flagship card, and now it's going up against the 5050 that was just released. Graphics card enthusiast Tech Bench has created a video pitching the venerable flagship of the Pascal era against the turnip of the Blackwell era with unexpected results. Now this YouTuber explains that he set out to overclock a 1080 Ti hard enough to embarrass the 5050. That was the goal of the video. It started off with that being the end goal and then things took a turn. We're, we're gonna get to that. However, things didn't turn out as planned with the 5050 grasping an unexpected triumph both at stock and with its impressive overclock ability. Trash Bench's plans regarding the GTX 1080 Ti didn't get off to the best start with two samples of this old flagship having to be cast aside before finding one that could muster anything more than stock performance. Apparently it took days to get the selected card to perform with fine tuning of curves, offsets, drivers, and APIs used, and oh, also a custom cooling loop to rouse this respected champ of old. Now he's running up against a brick wall limit of 2.2 gigahertz on the 1080 Ti that he had on hand. Sadly, there are only so many rocket pods you can fit to an old silicon Zimmer frame before it topples over. At this stage of the video, it's admitted that the original 1080 Ti beats the 5050 idea was dead and actually things turned upside down. Let's take a look. Now, I love the use. I love the use of a zip tie in this. When you start zip tying stuff on GPUs, especially things are about to get weird. Let me just take a look at this. This is crazy. Attempting to give the RTX 5050 a fighting chance, Trash Bench also boosted this little card's cooling far beyond stock. As the water block he had was too large for a tiny 5050, he ended up using, yep, you just saw it, a tower CPU cooler, and he applied it to the GPU with a big old fat fan attached to it. The RTX 5050 came out fighting with Trash Bench seeing 3.3 gigahertz core clock, a 28% increase on stock speeds. The extra shot of speed coming from purely raw offset tweaking precipitated a very respectable 17.55% gain on average in the handful of games Trash Bench tested, which you can see right here for this comparison. Compare that to the average uplift of just 3% that Trash Bench could achieve by tuning the old GTX 1080 Ti. Now you can see some of the 1440p benchmarks on various games here on the chart, as well as you can see, you got Cyberpunk, Red Dead, Valhalla. Check this out, Red Dead Redemption 2, 85 average FPS, 1440p. That's with the 5050, we'll call it the OC edition of that card. The end result was that the already better performing 5050 ended up eclipsing expectations with an awesome overclock and an even better 1440p gaming benchmark result. In addition to this excellent showing for the much maligned RTX 5050, Trash Bench proudly announced that he pocketed the top six scores in 3D Mark Time Spy for this GPU model. The rest of the system specs were respectably ordinary. He had a 12600 KF, locked at 5.3 gigahertz, E cores off for all of that overclocked goodness, plus 32 gigs of DDR4 memory in that bad boy. Now to sum up the whole comparison, he said the 1080 Ti was meant to be the star and the 5050 stole the whole show. Boy, that's not something that you would ever expect to hear. However, with the rose tinted GTX 1080 Ti glasses now truly slipped, he added, I didn't see that coming. So I guess it's good night, grandpa. Let's check out the comments, see what some folks are saying down below. Mmm, I would have been impressed if the 5050 had more VRAM. As it stands, this overclock is completely irrelevant because of the lack of VRAM. Goes to show what could have been in a world where NVIDIA is interested in bringing the best value to their clients. Let me know where you guys sit on that. And honestly, I mean, this is a little bit wacky, but this is the type of PC chaos that honestly I live for. And uh, a lot of thoughts online that I'm reading are saying this is the reminder of how budget GPUs often have more headroom than they're allowed to show. So are marketing limits real? Maybe. Let me know what you guys think down below. The Sing might have been born a 50-50, but at the end of the day, after that modding session, it's basically a 50-75. What would we even call this thing? Let me know what you guys think down below. Micron just launched an SSD that basically breaks the sound barrier, for servers at least, but this is gonna trickle down to consumer eventually, which is why we're gonna pay attention to it. Take a peek. Micron unveils 9650 SSD, the first PCIe Gen 6 data center drive with up to 28 gigabytes per second read speeds. It's absolutely insane. Micron has officially launched its new lineup of data center SSDs built on its ninth gen 3D NAND technology, and the update introduces three products designed for high performance AI workloads and modern data center demands. Micron 9650 SSD becomes the world's first PCIe Gen 6 NVMe drive, while the 6600 Ion SSD debuts with a record 122 terabyte capacity in an E3 
3.S form factor. Also introduced is the 7600 SSD, positioned as the most efficient and lowest latency PCIe Gen 5 SSD for mainstream workloads. Now this is obviously designed for AI and HPC workloads that require a high amount, massive amount of sequential throughput. Sampling starts Q3 of this year, so we'll start to see deployment, I would imagine, later this year. Micron says that the new drives are already validated with major ecosystem partners, including NVIDIA, Dell, Astera Labs, and Broadcom. Samples of the drives are now available to customers, while the 122 terabyte Ion SSD is expected to ship later in Q3. No pricing, and honestly, it's probably better if we don't know. Now, obviously, AI and high-performance computing are the main targets here, but SSDs like this also do shape what's coming to enthusiast rigs in probably a few years. Now, you won't be installing Call of Duty on this, but NVIDIA's Inference Farms, well, they sure as hell will. Let's take a look at the comments real quick. NVMe water cooling. Now we're talking. Oh boy, we finally arrived. We've made it, boys and girls. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. While you're down there, hit subscribe. How about that? Could be kind of fun. The RTX 5090 has been out since January, but in China, it's suddenly everywhere again, and that has people raising eyebrows. Let's take a peek. GeForce RTX 5090 reportedly has easy availability in China. Wait a second. They're not supposed to have that card. Isn't the 5090D V2 launching soon? How are they getting so many 5090s over there? Well, we have some theories. Let's take a peek. The NVIDIA RTX 5090 is not just easily available in China, but the dual slot design for servers reportedly sees no problem with uh, that 16 pin connector due to a different location. Now we've talked before on the channel about 5090s being smuggled into China because they were banned due to the US export restrictions. The GPUs in the lab get turned into dual slot blower style cards, and there's a whole process for this too. Boy, you just look at the footage. They've got a whole assembly line. You got robots doing this thing. It's not like a back alley operation at this point. It's turned full blown automated. Now, as per the report, the availability of the card is stable and also available on major e-commerce platforms. This means a lot of RTX 5090 inventory is readily available to the enterprises since the 5090 offers greater AI performance, unlike the 5090D, which was nerfed due to US export policies. Nonetheless, the new RTX 5090D V2 coming out just a week from now, but enterprises won't need that due to the stable availability of the faster RTX 5090, which has superior AI capabilities and 32 gigs of VRAM compared to the 24 on the 5090D V2. Now, obviously what they're doing with these 5090s are tearing them apart and then slimming them down, converting them to blower style coolers, it allows them to jam a whole lot more into it. In fact, you see things like Inno 3D launching the Frostbite Pro, which allows you to get to a single slot with a lot of these GPUs, 5080, 5090, which is mainly for enterprise use, AI inference, things like that. Now, since the server cases reportedly need something more compact since they receive the custom designs, which are often two and a half to three slots thicker, they are turned into dual slot GPUs with a blower style cooler. But that's done after installing the GPU chip and VRAM modules on a newer PCB that has the 16 pin connector on the right. Once again, that's done since the server cases don't have the clearance for the 16 pin connector, which is crucial for preventing any melting issues. When the connector is positioned on the right, not only does it save space, but the melting problem is almost eliminated. As per enterprise, not a single RTX 5090 saw the connector melting so far, even after deploying nearly a thousand 5090s and 4090s. This also goes in line with what Kingpin thought about the top location of the connector on these high-end GPUs. Let's take a quick peek at the comments. Circumventing trade restrictions or sanctions is easy. Sell it to one of the country's neighbors and then they sell it on. A trick as old as the stupid rules themselves. Imagine the effing noise out of these things. And then obviously a uh, relevant meme here. <laughs> the RTX 50 super cards might not be some distant dream. A new rumor is saying that Nvidia's next move could be dropping sooner than we thought. Let's take a peek. Nvidia GeForce RTX 50 super rumored to appear before 2026. Now a lot of rumors that came out like as soon as like a few weeks or even a month ago said maybe CES 2026 is what we're looking at for super cards. Well, that has been pushed up reportedly. Again, all rumors, but boy, don't we love a good rumor. Let's take a peek. When Copite began sharing details on the RTX 50 Super Series, we started asking around, but it quickly became clear that it was way too early for any meaningful conversations about the refreshed RTX 50 graphics cards. The leaker only shared the most important changes, such as the introduction of the three gigabyte GDDR7 memory modules, higher TDPs and clock adjustments. However, However, the super update for this generation appears to focus primarily on just the VRAM side of things at GDDR7 memory. The general expectation is that the RTX 50 Super lineup will be unveiled at CES 2026, a familiar launch window for Super and TI refreshes. However, according to Tweak Town, Nvidia might be planning an earlier release. Possibly, this is gonna make the holidays nuts, the 2025 holiday season or simply sometime in Q4. Now you don't just pull out a super refresh and unless there's either pressure or profit and let's be real here, there's both. Uh, Let's take a look at the breakdown on the leaks of what the difference of these cards might mean. Now I'm running a 5080 in this rig. I'm gonna tell you what I think about this.
this, check it out. The 5080 Super versus the 5080 would add an additional eight gigabytes of VRAM to the card. Same with the 5070 Ti Super versus the 5070 Ti, and then you got six gigs on the 5070 Super versus the 5070. Now, the only card that's going to experience some memory clock increases looks like it's gonna be the 5080 Super. Obviously, each card coming with various power demands that come with the increased VRAM on the card. You can see here, 55 watts on the 5080 Super, 50 watts on the 5070 Ti Super, and a 25 watt increase on the 5070 Super versus the 5070. And as you can see here from videocards.com, here's the full lineup of the 50 series cards, including that 5090 DV2, which is coming out in just a few weeks here. And then you can see these 50 series super cards slotted in here as well with their rumored specs. Now, if you're like me and you just bought a 5080, not but a couple months ago, this rumor might sting a little bit, but hey, that's kind of NVIDIA's whole deal lately, isn't it? Let's take a look at the comments, see what people are saying. Let me know what you guys think down below as well. NVIDIA, here's extra VRAM. It'll only cost you an extra however many dollars. You're welcome, dorks. <laughs> okay, I guess prices are the issue. Let me know what you guys think about this. I know a lot of people that have waited to upgrade to the 50 series that are just hardcore NVIDIA. They want an NVIDIA card. If you're waiting, maybe this is an opportunity to get a card based on this super refresh and the rumors that we're seeing here. Let me know if you're one of those folks in the comments down below. Boy, we're starting to see more and more from this NVIDIA N1X. The new N1X desktop SoC just showed up in Furmark now, and it's running some brand new 590 drivers. Let's see what's going on. First Geekbench, now Furmark. NVIDIA N1X desktop SoC appears in its first Furmark leak featuring new 590 drivers. Now, currently NVIDIA is at the 577 driver series and the company has confirmed that the 580 branch will be the last to support older architectures like Kepler and Maxwell. This means the 590 branch used here is already in development and is likely the first to drop support for those architectures. The N1X uses the NVIDIA 590.22 drivers specifically. As for the actual benchmark, someone used an older version of Furmark, V1 Furmark, with the 720 preset. It's worth noting that Furmark is not just a stress test too, it includes benchmarking mode. The results can be compared against others. However, the official Furmark 1 ranking for a 720p resolution hasn't been updated in 13 freaking years. Still, we have access to live data, which allows for some comparisons. Now the score, 4286 points. Strongly suggests that the benchmark does not reflect the GPU's full potential. It's less than half the score of a 5060, despite that desktop GPU having 37% fewer cores. The GPU reached a maximum utilization of just 63%, most likely due to power limit constraints as the reported temperatures remain below 59 degrees Celsius. Now, obviously this is uh, this is marking and giving a little bit of a preview into NVIDIA's deeper move into ARM style desktop computing. Some speculate that it could maybe even rival Apple Silicon if NVIDIA goes full stack with their SoC designs. There's nothing meaningful to compare just yet, but this confirms that NVIDIA has started testing the N1X or N1 series on Windows, but it's unlikely that this was an internal NVIDIA test. More likely, one of the OEM partners evaluating the N1X for future products submitted the result. And you know what, honestly, this is it's way too early to call this an Apple M series killer, but it would be the most aggressive desktop chip rumor that we've seen from NVIDIA. We're starting to see more and more of this come out. First, we had the Geekbench numbers. Now we're seeing some Furmark stuff, you know, and it also raises a question, how long until the GeForce experience tries to run your whole OS? It seems like it's coming pretty soon. Let's take a look at the comments, see what folks are saying. This N1X is more interesting than any current Blackwell GPU. Windows on ARM will be ready in three years. Here's an interesting thought. If you guys remember the Shield, I really hope something like this could drive a Shield refresh. Interesting. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Make sure that you hit the, uh, the old like and subscribe button and be sure to drop a comment below. Helps the channel to grow. As always, we will see you next time.